when you have a mask on. At the beginning of a Westwood service, whether it's in person or online, we pause to affirm that the land where we gather has borne witness to thousands of years of indigenous history, culture, and spirituality, and continues to do so today. Westwood's building resides in Amuskachee, Waskahagan, the Cree name for Edmonton meaning Beaver Hills and is located on Treaty 6 territory. It is the traditional home to a diverse indigenous peoples including Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakoto Sioux and many others. For those of you online this morning, I invite you to type into the chat if you're not from Treaty 6. Before our settlers arrived here, there were people here Diverse nations of people who built complex societies, civilizations, and cultures over the span of many, many generations. As treaty people, we are partners in the stewardship of the land we all rely on, and we are responsible for the impact of our choices, responsible to the ancestors who came before us, and responsible to future generations. Jacqueline, I invite you to come forward and light the beeswax candle. In the spirit of reconciliation and decolonization, I invite Jacqueline to light this candle as an expression of our solidarity with Indigenous peoples in their fight for self-determination. Welcome and good morning, everyone. My name is Heather McLean Smith. My pronouns are she and her. I am a member of this congregation and I am your service leader this morning. Our guest speaker is Master Corporal Maddie Webb on the screen eventually, later, maybe a little bit later. He was supposed to come visit us in person, but sadly he's not feeling well. As a Unitarian Universalist congregation, we come together each week to learn more about what it means to be human, how to stay compassionate through disagreement, how to uphold our principles and stretch into the discomfort. We're not here because we figured out life's greatest questions or because we think we've got it all figured out. We come here to learn more about what it means to be in relationship, how to listen, how to agree to disagree, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, how to create trust and compassion in one another. We come here to consider ourselves, to give ourselves pause, to think, to feel. We come here to discover just how we can use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder. There are many helping hands that, keep, that comprise Westwood. They keep our website updated, our services uploaded to YouTube, plan out our worship services throughout the year, answer emails, as well as oversee the governance of our Westwood community. For newcomers, I extend a warm welcome, especially this frosty morning. Each of us, whether we have been here once or many times, we each are a contributing thread to the social fabric that makes this community. 
Inquiring minds are invited to sign the guest book located near the welcome table towards the back of this room or visit westwoodunitarian.ca online to view our online calendar and sign up for the e-newsletter. Next week is our informal, mostly monthly serendipity service led by Sarah McEwen. Jacqueline, while you still got the handle, Candle, the handle on the candle. Can you light? Can you light the chalice? Thank you. <laughs> the opening words I thought that would be really good this morning. There's a picture here. Is um, the poem by John McRae, Flanders Fields. And it always makes me a little teary. So just give me a minute. In Fandle, Flanders Fields, the poppies, the poppies blow between the crosses, row by row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, sacred herd amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt down, saw sunset glow, lived and were li loved, sorry, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders fields. Please read on your masks and rise in body or in spirit. For him, let there be light. Please rise in body or in spirit. I forgot that part. <laughs> this time in our service, we pause to reflect on our week. We recall the milestones, joys, concerns, sorrows, the changes in our lives, and send love and healing to those who are in need. Community is deepened by sharing with each other what is in our hearts, in our minds, and going on in our lives. But first, a little refresher on how to make things flow as smoothly as possible. For those here in the building with us, you're invited to line up. We'll get a little creative, maybe along there and along there. Come forth. You can remove your mask when you're speaking into the mic. You'll say your, your candle out loud if you feel like it. And then when you're done speaking, then you're to light your candle. And then the next person behind you can start speaking while you're lighting your candle. <clears throat> Uh, a note when you're holding the mic, if you wanted to unclip it, which I hope you don't, don't cover up this antennae because that makes the mic freak out and make terrible background staticky noise. 
Alternatively, if you want to light a candle in silence, or you can signal to me and I can come to you and let you light a candle and I'll put it on the candelabra. For those of you online, I've not forgotten about you. You're invited to raise your Zoom hand, either physical or virtual. Yeah, like kind of like that. And then when we're done all the live candles, then we'll call on the Zoom people. All right, I'm going to light one final candle for all of the joys and sorrows that remain in our heart, but remain unspoken. Please join us in our affirmation on the screen. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power, to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Each week during our Sunday service, we take a few minutes to acknowledge the gifts we both bring to and receive from this compassionate community. Here is some information if you'd like to make a financial gift on the screen. Yep. Today I'd like to uplift our Harmonia Choir. Today we are blessed with the musical talent of Westwood's Choir Harmonia, directed by Rebecca Patterson, with their newest accompanist, Julie Forbes. Harmonia rehearses every Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 8.15 right here at the Westwood Building. They are a friendly, non addition choir, and they look forward to talking with you after the service and answering any questions you may have. Our offertory music will be paid, played through once, and then you're invited to join in. Please keep your masks on and rise together, or no, we can stay seated, I think we stay seated for this one with our masks on. For, for you I receive, to you I give. They'll play it through once and then we'll sing. so pretty when the choir sings. Our guest speaker this morning is Maddie Webb, a long distant Westwood friend who resides in Cold Lake, Alberta. I met Maddie sometime over the pandemic and once before in person. Like I said earlier, I promise you he is not a floating, floating torso. I know we are looking forward to finally meeting Maddie this morning here in person. But honestly, I'm so grateful for the Westwood technology that, I don't know what you're signaling for me, Brenda. I think there's a song first. There's a song first? No, there's a song after. Yep. Okay, so Maddie resides in Cold Lake. He's been a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force since January 2014. He enjoys building Lego, getting slept on by his cat Simba, and of course, Broadway musicals. Please welcome Maddie Webb. Good morning, uh, Westwood. Um, again, I'm really sorry I can't be there in person uh, with you today. I really, really wanted to, but uh, unfortunately, the illness has caught up with me. <clears throat> so as, uh, as Heather said, my name is Master Corporal Maddie Webb, and I'm an avionics systems technician with the Canadian Armed Forces, which is Canada's military. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to join you today and to be part of your Remembrance Day and Veterans Week ceremonies. 
Every no November, Canadians pause to honor the achievements and sacrifices of those who have served our country in uniform. Generations of veterans and their families have stood tall in times of need to ensure that all of us can live in a free and peaceful country and a better world. Sometimes that means training our allies abroad so they can keep their people safe or joining peacekeeping missions when tensions are high. Sometimes it means helping out at home when there's a natural disaster or an emergency, whether it's a flood, a forest fire, or a pandemic. And sometimes it means going to war to defend what we hold dear. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces have served courageously in two world wars, as well as in Korea and, Af and Afghanistan, and in countless missions around the globe. Being part of Canada's military can be a difficult and dangerous job. We do it because we want to make a difference, because we want to protect Canadian values, and because we want to make the world a better place. That's why on days like today, we gather to remember. We gather to learn about the strength and sacrifice of Canadian veterans throughout our history and right up until today. Today, I would like to highlight the contributions of persons of color, Indigenous peoples, and women, all who volunteer to put their lives on the line. I'd like to start today with a video from a Canadian recording artist, J.P. Cormier. As part of serving a nation in times of war or peace, many soldiers, sailors, and aviators put their bodies on the line. What is often not understood or discussed is the fact that they also put their minds on the line. Too many times the battlefield rests in the mind long after leaving the danger. In the last five years, the CAF has lost 85 members to suicide. As we listen together to the words of J.P. Cormier, we remember and honor their sacrifices. Hi guys. Uh, what you're about to see is uh, the culmination thus far of a song that I wrote last uh, Friday night. And uh, I recorded it, uh, I wrote the song in about 10 minutes and <laughs> recorded it well, the first time I ever sang it was that video, and uh, I put it up on Facebook. And as of tonight, at uh, about seven o'clock, in this massive snowstorm here we're having in Nova Scotia, uh, we're at 700,000 people who have seen the post and uh, interacted with it in some way. And I've heard from literally thousands of soldiers and soldier families and people who are affected by PTSD and have lost people to PTSD and we wanted to make a lyric video for the song and uh, instead of doing using stock footage or or anything else like that instead I asked all these people who have been with me on this journey for the last week to send me photographs of themselves or their or their lost loved ones, or, their, or the people in their family who are soldiers and affected by this disorder. And uh, so what you're about to see is a montage video, a lyric video, of all these people who have embraced the song and, and me, and uh, I'm, I'm embracing them back. Got home from the service as the spring began its turn Twelve long months away He folded up his uniform with the medals tucked inside Started living for today But the present could not find him, nor could his wife and kids He was there, but he was gone Soon his only comfort was a bottle and his gun Something right that went so wrong And the silence keeps on coming as the movie plays again You 
can smell that yellow dust and death hanging on the wind. And we thought the war was over, but the headlines do reveal that another soldier died today on the hometown battlefield. Sits outside the courthouse with his pant legs tucked away And no one knows his name One wrong step there in the sand put him where he is today One more just the same All his memories live there in the space below his knees Back when he was old that I.E.D. didn't just relieve him of his legs It blew apart his soul And the silence keeps on coming as the movie plays again You can smell that yellow dust and death flying on the wind And we thought the war was over But the headlines do reveal that another soldier died today on the hometown battlefield And if you're wearing loafers, you ain't walked the burning sands And you ain't never had to shoot another living man It don't matter if we won, it don't matter if we lost They were following their orders no matter the cost So I remember what they've given When I see my flag unfurled Free against the sky And the way we seem to lose them When they get back to the world Can someone tell me why? That the silence keeps on coming as the movie plays again You can smell that yellow dust and death hanging on the wind Oh, we thought the war was over, but the headlines do reveal That another soldier died today on the hometown battlefield Yes, we pray the war is over, but the headlines do reveal that another soldier died today on the hometown battlefield. Sorry to bum everybody out with that song, but I felt it was a very powerful thing to, to bring up. Um, something I wanted to add in, this is not part of my script that I'm looking at in front of me. Um, of those 85 CAF members that I talked about, um, who we've lost in the last five years, um, I knew one of them personally. Um, he was in my unit. Uh, we were never posted at the same time. Um, however, it's something that I felt was important to highlight that we don't just lose people in distant countries and distant lands. Uh, we lose people when they come back home or when they've been traumatized for whatever reason. Uh, we'll move on now to talk about some uh, some other heroes um, from the Canadian Armed Forces over the over the years. When we talk about Canadian strength and sacrifice on the battlefield, the Battle of Vimy Ridge comes to mind. This was a key moment in the First World War and it's become a defining moment in our country's history. Picture this, it's early morning on April 9th, 1917, 105 years ago. 15,000 Canadian troops have been given the job of taking back Vimy Ridge a heavily fortified spot in Northern France under enemy control. Attempts to reclaim the ridge by British and French forces have already failed, but the Canadians have spent months preparing. And so in the face of thunderous machine gun and artillery fire, 
With explosions and shrapnel all around them, the Canadians began their advance. With incredible bravery and determination, they made their way up the ridge. They fought for four grueling days and nights until they were victorious. Vimy Ridge was one of the first times people from different parts of the country fought together as one. And it showed the world what Canadian troops are made of. Sadly, the mission came at a heavy cost. <clears throat> Nearly 3,600 Canadians lost their lives and another 7,000 were wounded. Soldiers like Ethelbert Curley Christian, who joined the heroic march up Vimy Ridge as part of the 78th Canadian Infantry Battalion. He was one of many black Canadians who volunteered to serve their country in the First World War, despite the discrimination they faced. After taking on enemy fire, Curley became trapped in a trench for two full days. He was eventually rescued, but lost both his arms and legs. It was a terrible injury. In true Canadian spirit, Curley recovered and went on to help create a program for disabled veterans, one that is still offered today. Curley's story is a sobering reminder of the cost of war. Another reminder is the Canadian raid on Dieppe during the Second World War. Just 25 years after the Battle of Vimy Ridge, Canadian soldiers were once again tasked with recapturing an enemy position in France. Only this time, they were not able to claim victory. Nearly 70% of the Canadian soldiers who took part in the Dieppe raid were wounded, taken prisoner, or killed. It was Canada's worst single day loss of the entire war. One Canadian soldier who survived was Paul Delorme. Paul was one of the thousands of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit soldiers who fought for Canada in the Second World War. He was wounded by a grenade during the Dieppe raid and taken prisoner. He was only 21 years old at the time. After three harsh years in captivity and two attempts to escape, Paul was finally released at the end of the war and got to go home. He passed away earlier this year at the age of 101. This year on November 8th, Indigenous Veterans Day, let's all take a moment to remember and honor Paul Delorme. Despite the risks when Canada or our allies are in need, members of the Canadian Armed Forces step up. When the Second World War broke out in 1939, thousands of Canadians signed up for duty. And even though only men could serve in combat at the time, thousands of women played an integral role as well. In fact, this year marks the 80th anniversary of the founding of the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service. Throughout the Second World War, more than 6,700 women enlisted in the Women's Naval Service, also known as the Wrens. They were stationed in Canada, the United States, and Great Britain. The Wrens filled dozens of essential roles, including analyzing key data that made Canadian ships safer from devastating German mines. That work saved countless lives. The first Canadian director was named Adelaide Sinclair, a trailblazer who spent her entire life breaking barriers for women. Adelaide's impressive leadership helped make the Wrens a vital part of Canada's war effort. She became the first Canadian woman to earn the rank of captain in the Royal Canadian Navy and was even awarded the Order of the British Empire in 1945. These days, stories of courage and compassion from members of Canada's armed forces are inspiring a whole new generation of Canadians. Because the truth is, the job of protecting freedom and keeping us safe is never done. There are always new challenges to face and new missions to support both at home and abroad. Members of the Canadian Armed Forces continue to lead and they continue to serve supporting peace and democracy, helping vulnerable people and making the world a better place for everyone. Over the years, Canada's military has played a crucial role in responding to natural disasters in every part of this country. 
like in Manitoba in 1997, when melting snow from the Red River created a once in a century flood that threatened the lives and homes of thousands of people. 8,000 CAF members were called to the scene. They helped fill sandbags, track flooding, and take care of Manitobans who had to flee. Their hard work and expertise helped ensure that despite the massive flooding, not a single Canadian lost their life. CAF members were called into action again the following year when a huge ice storm hit Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick. More than 16,000 military personnel stepped up to help their fellow Canadians, making it the largest deployment since the Korean War. They cleared roads for emergency vehicles, restored telephone lines, delivered bad new needed supplies, and checked in on vulnerable residents with no heat or electricity. This mission was particularly important in my life as I lived in a rural area in southeastern Ontario and had to leave my home while we were without power for 18 days. Without the dedication and service of the Canadian Armed Forces members during this time, it may have taken much longer to get power back to our small town of less than 500 people. Of course, natural disasters aren't the only time CAF members are called into service on Canadian soil. Every year, the Royal Canadian Air Force responds to about a thousand search and rescue missions across the country. The Royal Canadian Navy works alongside the Canadian Coast Guard to intervene when there's an emergency on the water. Since the earliest days of COVID-19, CAF members have been there to help Canadians through this unprecedented crisis. Whether it's supporting elderly residents at long-term care facilities in Quebec and Ontario, or assisting hard-hit Indigenous communities in remote parts of the country, or distributing vaccines to Canadians from coast to coast to coast. I always get confused by that third coast, but it's the one up north, just to clarify. The work we do these days doesn't stop at Canada's borders. CAF members can be found all across the globe helping to protect people in danger, and making the world a safer place. For example, in the lead up to Russia's illegal and immoral invasion of Ukraine, CAF members helped train thousands of Ukrainian security forces. I know how proud CAF members are to have worked closely with our Ukrainian allies and to see them defend their country so bravely. No matter the challenge, no matter the place, Members of the Canadian Armed Forces are ready to spring into action when we need them, whether it's on land, at sea, or in the air, whether it's in communities here at home or in countries far away. I'm proud to serve in the Canadian Armed Forces. I'm proud to serve my country. And I'm proud to serve all of you. I hope you'll take the opportunity to reflect on the role our military has played and continues to play in making Canada the country it is today. As I contemplate the journey we've taken today through the minds lost after battles far from the front lines to the heroics of war and the job of keeping Canadians safe, I'm reminded of another song, one from the Broadway musical, Spring Awakening. For those of you who thought you'd get a service without me uh, mentioning a Broadway lyric, I'm very pleased to say that that is not going to happen. The song, Those You've Known, is sung by Melchior at the graves of two friends who have passed away, Moritz through suicide and Wendla through a botched abortion, both of whose spirits join him in the song. Melchior contemplates his own demise and desire to give in to darkness, and through the song, he makes the decision to move forward. The lyrics start with Moritz. Those you've known and lost still walk behind you. All alone, they linger till they find you. Without them, the world goes dark around you. And nothing is the same until you know that they have found you. They continue with Wendla. Those you've pained 
may carry that still with them. All the same, they whisper, all forgiven. Still your heart says their shadows bring the starlight and everything you've ever been is still there in the dark night. And Melchior then comes in with, though you know you've left them far behind, you walk on by yourself and not with them. Still you know they will fill your heart and mind when they say there's a way through this. At this point, all three of them come together to sing. Those you've known and lost still walk behind you. All alone, their song still seems to find you. They call you as if you knew their longing. They whistle through the lonely wind, the long blue shadows falling. As the two spirits continue to urge Melchior to move forward, eventually Melchior sings alone. Now they'll walk on my arm through the distant night and I won't let them stray from my heart. Through the wind, through the dark, through the winter light, I will read all their dreams to the stars. I'll walk now with them, I'll call on their names and I'll see their thoughts are known, not gone. They walk with my heart and I'll never let them go. Remembering those from the past is a powerful way to keep us from repeating history, but also the best way to ensure that the people we've lost will always be with us. If you know a member of the Canadian Armed Forces, past or present, be sure to thank them. That always means so much. Listen to their stories, understand their sacrifice, and together let's continue to honor those three sacred words, lest we forget.
we've got one more song for us all to sing. It's Hymn of Life. The lyrics will appear magically on the screen behind us. Please rise, embody your own spirit, keep your masks on, and join together. I have some closing words, which is a poem, and I invite Jacqueline to graciously put out my candles. I picked this poem, it's by Ellen Bass, and it's called Pray for Peace. Pray to whomever you kneel down to, Jesus nailed to his marble or plastic or wooden cross, his suffering face bent, to kiss you. Buddha still sits under the bow tree in scorching heat. Adonai, Allah, raise your arms to Mary that she may lay her palm on our brows. To Shekinah, queen of heaven and earth, to Inanna in her striped descent. Then pray to the bus driver who takes you to work. On the bus, pray for everyone riding that bus for everyone riding buses all over the world. Drop some silver and pray. Waiting in line for the movies, for the ATM, for your latte and croissant, offer your plea. Make your eating and drinking a supplication. Make your slicing of carrots a holy act, each translucent layer of the onion a deeper prayer. To hawk or wolf or the great whale, pray. Bow down to terriers and shepherds and Siamese cats. Fields of artichokes and elegant strawberries. Make the brushing of your hair a prayer. Every strand its own voice singing in the choir on your head. As you wash your face, the water slipping through your fingers a prayer, water, softest thing on earth, gentleness that wears away rock. Making love, of course, is already prayer. Skin and open mouths, worshiping that skin, the fragile cases we are poured into. If you're hungry, pray. If you're tired, pray to Gandhi and Dorothy Day, Shakespeare, Sappho, Sorgen's truth. When you walk to your car, to the mailbox, to the video store, let each step be a prayer that we all keep our legs, that we do not blow off anyone else's legs or crush their skulls. 
And if you're riding a bicycle or on a skateboard in a wheelchair, each revolution of the wheels of prayer as the earth revolves, less harm, less harm, less harm. And as you work typing with a new manicure, a tiny palm tree painted to one porcelain nail, or delivering soda, or drawing good blood into rubber-tipped cap valves, twirling pizzas. With each breath in, take in the faith of those who have believed when belief seemed foolish, who persevered. With each breath out, cherish. Pull weeds for peace. Turn over your sleep for peace. Feed the birds. Each tiny seed that spills onto the earth, another second of peace. Wash your dishes, call your mother, drink wine, shovel leaves or snow or trash from your sidewalk, make a path, fold a photo of a dead child around your visa card, scoop your holy water from the gutter, gnaw your crust, mumble along like a crazy person, stumbling your prayer through the streets. Thank you.